These days, all the buzz in the publishing industry is about iPads and publishing for them. Here is a little preview of how our plugins can revolutionize the way you prepare your files for print and iPad. You will see how you can save hours of work using the new features of the DTP tools Layer Comps 2.0 and Layer Groups 2.1 plugins, and why is it good to have the Page Control plugin. Let's take a look at the magazine we've designed for this presentation. You can see this is a standard print publication with just some specific items and settings that you do not need in the iPad version. This barcode is one example, since you won't need to show the first page of the magazine to the cashier when leaving the App Store. You can also see this black and white image and black and white page here, which is there solely to save printing costs. And on the iPad, you don't pay different for black and white or color pages, so there's no need to keep this black and white. You can see that when designing this document, we've created three different layer comps for the three different output versions, print, iPad vertical, and iPad horizontal. Our current comp, which is essentially a saved layout, is the one where you store settings for the printed version of the magazine. When we change the iPad ver to the iPad vertical from print to the iPad vertical, you will notice a slight change of the page size and the disappearance of the barcode on the first page. Also, the page with the ice cream is now in color. You can see this is still the same document, still the same file as before, and we only change settings of different objects, layers and pages to make it different with this, uh, and we switch between them with a single click. Uh, we made the picture color by turning off the effect layer which was there from Photoshop. The effect layer was there to turn the image black and white. You can see that with the layer groups plugin, this is a piece of cake to switch between or turn on and off visibility of layers of PSD files and Illustrator files. If we turn the black and white layer on again, you can see the image is black and white. If we turn it off, it is in color. Of course, you can do this for more. You can change the brightness and contrast settings if there is such an adjustment layer from Photoshop. So here we recorded a change in a single layer of a linked object. On the first page, we disable the visibility of a whole object, the barcode image. You can see you can also do this from the layer groups panel and you can do this from the versions from CS3, CS4 and CS5. The layer comps plugin also records the visibility of whole layers. This way you can replace the static content from the printed version by video or flash animation or buttons and other active content which you place on a separate layer and you switch between them when you switch between the outputs. Now, that was quite easy, right? We just resized the page with page control a little bit, showed or hit some objects and layers, but there is a bigger task for the layer comp plugin just ahead of us. As you know, publishing for iPad brings one very annoying task to the graphic designer, creating two documents, one for each orientation of the tablet. Now, instead of having two or three different files to manage, you can simply save the alternative layout as a layer comp. And since we are smart designers and we do not want to waste time, this is exactly what we did here. So let us click on the comp named iPad Horizontal and see the magic happening. Ta-da! You can see that we've changed the layout quite considerably here. We used the nice horizontal image which was also used for the vertical page but there it didn't fit the whole page, so we had to use this extra background for the title. In the horizontal version, we took advantage of this beautiful landscape photo and just placed all the titles, the magazine title and the headlines on the photo. Since the photo changed, the position changed, we had to shuffle the titles a little bit. You can see that the seafood was first on the vertical comp. Now it is the last one because we needed to take advantage of the color background of the photo. This change is even more visible on the, on the second page of the document. You can see that here we organized our original layout, which relied on a bunch of landscape photos and color boxes in, organized into a grid. We cannot simply rotate the content. So if we switch to horizontal, you can see that we had to shuffle the boxes and reorganize into a different grid. Of course, this position change was again recorded into a comp. 
you can see there is a whole bunch of stuff that got recorded into the comp but we can click into the iPad horizontal options to see what exactly the comp was recording. You can see you can name your comps so you can easily navigate in the list. You can add comments so you're pretty sure what layout alternative this is. You can also have two iPad horizontal alternatives and switch between them. Uh, make sure that you, you are using the layout alternative you like the most. Uh, first group of the, of the attributes saved applies to layers. This was also in the layer comps 1.0 plugin, so some of you already know that. You can record visibility of the whole layer. It means whether the layer is turned visible or not, whether it's locked, whether it's printable. This also works with layer groups in the from, from the version CS. You can record whether the guides are visible and whether they're locked. And you can record the order in which the layers are. Now here is a new new feature. You can hide layers which were created after the comb. This means if you record a comb and then you add more layers into the document, you can instantly have them hidden in the new comb so they don't mess your alternate design you saved early, earlier. Uh, another category of saved attributes applies to spreads and pages. This is spread orientation and page size and position. This means it records the size of your page and the relative position to other pages in the spread you can record size and position of the page items their visibility as we've seen with the barcode size and position we've seen with the boxes on the page in the background here you can just record object layer visibility this is would be employed when we turn the image black and white or color earlier and you can record whether the object is locked or not of course you can also turn on this feature which hides every page item added after this comp was created or updated. So, all the stuff that is recorded into a comp can save you hours of work every day. But what is equally important is the stuff which is not recorded in the comp. Let me show you why. Let's say you're almost done with this magazine and your editor or customer calls in and says, eh, you know what? We tried the 12 seafood recipes and two of them made us really sick, so we had to just remove them. Can you please change it on the cover that we only have 10 recipes now? Uh, also, German cheese is tasty, but stinky sounds bad. Put, put smelly in there, it doesn't sound that bad. You know, on the second page, of course, you can see, oh, red beet, red beet is not cool, put lobster. And instead of a secret ingredient here, you can put something else there, let's say hashish or, or something else. Now you hang up the phone and you realize that you did all these corrections into one file, but you do not remember what you did. And of course, now you'd have to open all the three files and go through all the text and check what you changed and what you did not change. Well, now you can take advantage of what's not recorded in the comp. You can see that when we change to vertical, all the text changes you've applied stay there. So there's no more red bead, there's lobster, there's no more stinky cheese, there's smelly cheese, there are only 10 recipes, not the two which would make you sick. And now the secret ingredient is revealed to be hashish. So thank you for the time you've spent with this video and remember you can also buy the layer comps and layer groups plugin in a cost effective layer tools bundle and the page control helps you to resize the pages in InDesign from CS up so you can create iPad ready content with older versions of InDesign too.